Welcome back, everyone, to another C3 Gaming episode. I am CD3 Daddy. And I am C3DG Minecraft. And today, we are putting down our pickaxes for a minute. We're not building an iron farm, a mob grinder, or a super smelter. Nope, we are actually going behind the scenes. We get asked all the time how we build and run our Minecraft servers, and how other people can play with their friends without having to use realms or leave their computer running 24-7. Exactly. So today, we're not building a farm. <laughs> That's right, Colin. We're building a home for our farms. We are going to show you, step by step, the incredibly easy way to set up your very own 24-7 Minecraft server using a service we love called Hostbyte. It's way easier than you think. And by the end of this video, you'll have your own world ready for you and your friends to join anytime. Let's get into it. All right, so first question, why Hostbite? We've looked at a lot of hosts and we landed on them for a few key reasons. Colin, tell us the four reasons we chose Hostbite. First, ease of use. Second, great performance. Third, affordable price. And fourth, excellent support. That's right. The first, it's incredibly user-friendly. Their control panel is clean and simple. You don't need to be a computer genius to use it. Second, the performance is fantastic. Not only do they use high-speed hardware, you actually get what you pay for. Other hosting services will offer a plan, but it will offer you a plan up to a certain level. With Hostbyte, if they say you're going to get a certain amount of memory, that's the amount of memory you get. What does this mean for you? It means less lag, ultimately, even when you have a few friends on and some TNT goes off. And of course, the price is really competitive. You can get a solid server set up and running for less than a couple cups of coffee each month. And last but certainly not least, their support is excellent. It is the best support that we have received from any of the hosting services that we have tried. All right, first things first, we are going to go to hostbyte.net slash C3 Gaming. Once you have entered that URL, you will be taken to Hostbyte's homepage. Now there's a lot of different options. We're only going to cover one of them today. We are going to look at the game servers. Game servers is located right next to home. In future videos, we may talk about dedicated servers and hybrid servers, but for now, we are going to click on game servers. And you'll see that Hostbyte does way more than just Minecraft. They have server setups for all kinds of self-hosted games, everything from Gary's Mod all the way down to Ark. But for today's video, we are focusing on Minecraft. And if you are on Bedrock, good news for you, there is a Minecraft Bedrock setup. Today, we are focusing on Java. We are going to click on the first panel, Minecraft. And you'll see that it takes us to a plans page. Now the plans page is basically how big do you want your server to be? How much resources do you want allocated for your game? Now it starts off with an extremely cheap 80 pence a month. Now for my American friends, that's about a dollar and seven cents monthly. And that is their dirt plan. It comes with one gig of RAM, one virtual core, and up to 25 gigs of NVMe storage. This is perfect if you're just wanting to get your feet wet with an online host for your Minecraft server. If you are wanting to play with your friends or even experiment with plugins, you would need to probably pick a larger plan. The next plan is grass, which is two gigs of RAM, copper, which is three gigs of RAM, and then when you get to iron, you get more storage. Now there are a lot of different plans to choose from, from one gig all the way up to an unmetered virtual core with unmetered memory with 75 gigs of NVMe storage. This is their max tier for the game server. The plan we are going to be selecting is the diamond plan. It's eight gigs of RAM, two and a half virtual cores with 50 gigs of NVMe storage. This is 
plenty big enough for you and your friends to hop on a survival world, a creative world, and it even has enough room left over to experiment with some plugins. The network speed is incredibly fast. They are all on a 10 gig network and you have three different servers to pick from. They've got locations in Great Britain, Germany, and their most recent server is in Chicago. Let's go ahead and click order now. Once you click the order now button, it is going to take you to your configuration page. It is going to confirm that you have selected the diamond plan and it's going to give you some information about your server. Directly under that, you are going to choose your billing cycle. If you're just wanting to get your feet wet, like I said before, with a smaller server, you can choose the monthly option. However, if you go quarterly, semi-annually or annually, you do get a discount. If you're just wanting to get your feet wet with the dirt plan and you wanted to upgrade later, you can absolutely do that as well. Once you choose your billing cycle, I'm going to leave mine on monthly for now. We are going to go down to the configurable options, which there is only two that we need to worry about. The first one is location. Since I am closest to Chicago, I'm going to choose the North America server, and then we are going to choose our Minecraft version. Now, You'll see here at the bottom that you can choose latest or enter a specific version ID. So if you're wanting to try to mirror a server of an SMP that you like to play on, you can type that out specifically right here, or you can just leave it on latest. You are not locked into this server version, so I would recommend just typing in latest. It's going to pull the latest Minecraft server jar, um, but we are actually going to change this after we install it. So I recommend just leaving it on latest and modify it after you have purchased your server. Go ahead and click continue. This is going to take you to the review and checkout screen where you can confirm your diamond plan or whichever plan you chose and that you are using the game server hosting, not the dedicated or the hybrid. It is going to confirm your price and your billing cycle. And lastly, your location. If everything looks good, just click checkout. If you have already registered with Hostbyte, you'll see the already registered button at the top where you can log in. If this is your first time, go ahead and just fill out the personal information, including your billing address and put in a password for your account security to register an account with them. And then at the bottom, select your payment details, whether you're paying with credit, debit, PayPal or bank transfer. Any additional notes do go to Hostbyte and then you have the option of joining their mailing list. Once you have filled out all that information, click the I have read and agreed to the terms of service. And of course, you would want to open this up and read the terms of service, but I've already done that. So once I fill out my information, I'm going to click complete order. Then we will show you the hosting panel. All right. Once you have confirmed your purchase, you should get an email with all of the details regarding your new gaming server. Go ahead and use the email address and password that you use to sign up for the service and log in. Once you have logged in, you will see your new server, which is located underneath your active products and services. From the Manage Products page, you can change your password, you can upgrade or downgrade your service, you can review your service information, and you can even cancel directly from this screen. Some hosting companies require you to reach out to their customer support to request a cancellation. You are not locked into any contracts, or term requirements with Hostbyte so you can cancel at any time. Let's go ahead and jump into our game panel. You'll click this button at the bottom that says go to panel. Once you click open panel, it is going to take you to game.hostbyte.net. You can actually save this URL and log into the panel directly without having to go through your Hostbyte account. Once you are in your game panel, your server is completely set up and ready to go. All you have to do is click start. It is going to download a few packages for our latest version. Whenever you set up a Minecraft server, you do have to accept Minecraft's end user license agreement. Normally, whenever you do this, you have to close the server down and relaunch it. But with the game panel, all you have to do is click accept and it will do all of that documentation for you.
And after just a few seconds, you'll see that the server is marked as on, and you'll see the little green dot, which indicates that the server is online. If you click this top IP address, this is the IP address for you and your friends to join. Go ahead and click on it now. Go ahead and head over into Minecraft. You can either add this as a server, or you can do a direct connection if you're just testing it out, whatever works for you. Enter that IP address and port number, and click Join. And just like that, you are now in your very own Minecraft server. And if we look around, we will look to see if Colin is here. I actually um, <laughs> spawned in a really bad spot. Oh, there's Colin. Look where I spawned, Colin. I spawned in this pit. Well, this is not ideal. This is going to be quite the survival world. Hello, buddy. Let's go ahead and close our server. All right, we are back at our game panel. Now, whenever you start up a server like this, you are exposing the server to the public internet. What you need to do is you need to whitelist you and your friends and turn the whitelist on. So I'm going to go ahead and add Colin. The command that you put in your console is whitelist, add, and your username. I have whitelisted Colin, and I'm going to turn the whitelist on by typing in whitelist on. So I'm going to go ahead and hop back to my server. I am going to attempt to join the server. Now I have not whitelisted myself, only Colin. And you'll see that I am not able to join because I did not whitelist myself. So this is going to prevent anybody other than who you allowed to join to join your server. Hopping back over to our game panel, we are going... Oh, looking at the game panel, it looks like Colin just burned to death. That's quite sad. But I'm going to go ahead and whitelist myself to go check on him and see what happened. So I'm going to type in whitelist add and then my username. Once I add my username, I'm going to go back to Minecraft. And I'm going to attempt to reconnect. And sure enough, I am now whitelisted. Let me go check on Colin, see what happened to him. Where are you, buddy? I was in the hole. Oh no, it spawned you back in that dreaded pit. I don't even remember where that's at now. Oh, here it is. You already made it out? Yeah. All right. Oh, <laughs> I forgot PvP's on. Stop it! All right, let's go ahead and go back over to our game panel, and we're going to do a couple things real quick. All right, we are back at our game panel. If all you're wanting to do is set up a vanilla server for you and your friends to play on, you're done. You can go ahead and close out of your, your game panel and play Minecraft. However, there are a couple things that I want to do with my server, so I'm going to go ahead and stop the server, and it will always give you a confirmation. Just click Yes, Stop Server. And you'll see that the server is marked as off. So now, not only did I kick Colin out, I'm not able to join. We are going to talk about two things before we end this video. The first one is, more than likely, if you're watching this video, you're wanting to experiment with some of the hopper settings or maybe some plugins, and you can't do that on vanilla Minecraft. What we are going to do is we are going to upgrade our vanilla Minecraft to a paper server. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on configuration. We're going to go to server actions and you'll see the addition right here says vanilla. So this is vanilla Minecraft. We are going to click the drop down. There are several options to pick from. If you wanted to do a forge or a fabric server, they've got everything from quilt and purple, but we're going to use paper for now. So go ahead and click on paper and select your paper version. The current one is 1.21.8. Of course, you can scroll all the way back to 1.7.10 if that's what you wanted to do. I'm going to go ahead and stick with the current version. Now, there is an option directly below it called Format. If I turn the 
format toggle on, this is going to delete everything from your server. Now, I don't want to do that. I'm I want to keep the world that we were just in. So I'm going to leave this off, which is the default. And then I'm going to click install different edition. It's going to tell you that the server is installing and I just got the notification that it is finished. So I'm going to go ahead and click back over to console and I'm going to click start. You'll see that there are a couple different things being downloaded. It is going to apply some patches because it is going to map all of the paper to the vanilla Minecraft. The first time you start your paper server, it is going to take a few seconds longer, which as you can see was not very long at all. Once we have the server is marked as on, you are ready to join back. I am back at my Minecraft screen, so I'm going to go ahead and click reconnect. And Colin beat me somehow. Because paper and vanilla are compatible with each other and I did not change the version, I was able to keep the whitelisting. I was able to keep the world data. If you wanted to start from scratch, like I said earlier, you could just click that format button and wipe the world and start completely from scratch. All right, we are at our game panel for the last time for this video. I did say I want to show you a couple things. So if we go back to our file manager, we'll see that we have a lot more options than what we previously had. We've got our paper jar, which is our Minecraft server. We actually have our original server still here, which we can change uh, back to if we wanted to. Or, you know, I'm actually going to go ahead and delete that. Just highlight it and click delete. We don't need that anymore. Now, one of the nice things about having a game panel is you can do all of your modifications with your plugins or your just regular server directly from your web browser. You don't need to worry about any text editors because it's all built in. And because we have our paper server installed, we already have our plugins folder, which we are going to talk about in a future video. But the last thing we're going to do is make ourselves a server operator. Now, again, if you're just wanting to play survival with your friends, you are already done and ready to go, but I'm gonna go ahead and give myself server operator. That way I can run commands directly in Minecraft. Until I do this, I am just a normal player. So to make yourself an operator, which gives you access to commands, I'm gonna type in OP space and my username. Once I do that, you'll get a confirmation in the console that says made your username a server operator. Now, if I go back to Minecraft one last time, you'll see I now have the option to change my game mode and I can actually issue commands directly from the game. Sorry, Colin. <laughs> Bruh. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. Leave a comment and let us know what plugins you want to see. Let us know what mods you want to use. And we will do a video to support that. If you have any questions about this video, join our Discord. Let us know and we'd be happy to help you. Also, join Host Bytes Discord. We will be leaving a link to all of the URLs you need to know about in the description. So go ahead and check that out. We will leave a link to the game panel. We will leave our affiliate link for Hostbyte. And we will leave a link to Hostbyte's Discord, where you will receive phenomenal support. As always, I'm CD3Daddy. And I am C3DG Minecraft. And we will see you in the next video.